Cakey! Cakey! It's a good cake. It's like, like, it's like a chocolate brownie cake. There's just so much chocolate shoved into this right now. It's just absurdly chocolatey. I have a predicament that... You know what? I'm just going to wait until I finish this cake. Just give me a sec here. I'm going to savor this. <laughs> okay. So this isn't even a whole cake. I know. I wanted to get a whole cake for the whole cake island video. This is like 1 20th of a cake. But still, it's a pretty damn good cake. All right. So... I have a little bit of a predicament, okay? I'm looking at the Geography is Everything lists that I've done, and I'm thinking, well, I haven't done a, ge a Geography is Everything on Totland yet. I'm like, well, I kind of did. I did those two videos explaining Totland. I did the first part when we only knew a few of the islands, like right after the arc had wrapped up, and then there was a One Piece magazine released last year, I think it was Volume 5, that actually revealed the names of every single island, as well as like some sketch art, and we know all the ministers and everything, so I did Part 2 then. So I did some restructuring. I went back and I retitled those videos as the Totland Geography is Everything videos, if you want to go and check that out, or I delve into pretty much all the islands of Totland. However, while I did discuss Whole Cake Island a little bit, I had so many islands to cover in that video, those videos, I just basically gave Whole Cake a quick pass over, like, yeah, it's Whole Cake Island, a sweet city, seducing woods, that's great, we gotta move on, because I had like 30-something islands to talk about. So in this video, we're gonna round all of Totland out, uh, talking about Big Mom Charlotte Linland's home base, the actual island where she spends most of her time, and where the majority of this arc took place, Whole Cake Island. All right, let's dive right in. I'm gonna eat, eat some more cake. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I gotta put this cake away. I'm sorry. I gotta put this cake away or I'm gonna be munching on that the entire video. Oh my God. Do yourself a treat. Go out after this and get yourself some chocolate cake. Or go get some chocolate cake for this video. You need to be in the same mindset I'm in right now with my mouth. Just just a wash in a chocolate, like, just geyser, okay? Alright. Ah. Uh, okay, so, to start off with uh, Whole Cake Island, this is how it used to look before the transformation into an actual cake. You know, it looks suspiciously less like a cake uh, about 63 years ago. This was the location that Mother Caramel went with the, uh, the, the uh, kids of the Sheep's House after Big Mom had her little bit of a hunger pang and, you know, killed the national hero of Elbaf. They, they sort of couldn't stay on Elbaf anymore, so they kind of went and, you know, found another place where they could set up the Sheep's House. It just so happened that that island was the place that would eventually become whole cake, okay? And keep in mind, like, this place actually does seem like a place that after you've had 60 years to mess around with it with devil fruit powers, you basically terraform this entire island into your liking. So, as for the cake itself, it is not a real cake. So that's the first question a lot of people have when you see this, like, is the cake an actual cake? Because, you know, in Chocolate Town, um, the buildings are actually made out of chocolate. You could just go over to, like, a, a park bench and just snap off a big, um, yeah, that's dark shot, that's good shit right there. So, I'm like, is the cake an actual cake? Like, no, it's an actual building, it's a structure. Uh, however, later on in the arc, after the whole tea party incident, the, uh, entire chateau begins to fall, and Stroyzen has to use his aforementioned devil fruit ability to turn the entire castle, the whole cake chateau, which is Big Mom's domain, her palace, into an actual, literal cake. So, um, yeah, Big Mom, I, I don't think, uh, Stroyzen has the ability to turn food back into solid objects, which it was very fortunate that Stroyzen was there because otherwise so many people would have gotten crushed by this whole cake chateau crumbling down. I imagine even when he turned it into an actual cake, some people still probably lost their lives in the cream and the mush. I mean, like, yeah, it's like, oh no, and a giant castle is gonna fall on us, we're all gonna get crushed. You know, he stabs the cake and it poof! It turns into an actual cake full of like dough and frosting and sprinkles. And they're like, oh good, now we're not gonna get crushed by several metric tons of concrete and stone. We're only gonna get crushed by several metric tons of dough and cream. Oh gosh! It just, it got everywhere. There were a few casualties from that still, but probably less people. You know, the ones that were strong enough, like, you know, the, the sweet commanders, like Smoothie and like Pair of Sparrow and Big herself, of course, they're strong enough to endure that, but yeah, so um, basically Big Mom's gonna have to build up an entire new castle now. That might take a little while for construction, 
Although, something very convenient that she does have on her side is Pero Sparrow. Pero Sparrow has the ability of the candy candy fruit, which were the, is it the lick lick fruit or the candy? I think it's the candy candy fruit because there was another, the Gasparate in one of the movies had a fruit that turned him into candy. But I, yeah, because Pero Sparrow has the giant tongue. But anyway, yeah. So using his abilities though, he can make candy structures like as a base. And then you can just add like reinforce it with steel to make an actual building, which is actually exactly exactly what he did with Caesar Clown's laboratory. So let's just talk about that first. That's the very first thing that we actually, one of the first things we get to see on the island itself, because this was before the Straw Hats even arrived. Um, Caesar got captured by Big Mom, and he's there, you know, talking to her, and Big Mom's like, how is the gigantification experiments going, Caesar? And of course, Caesar tries to play up the poor me act, where he's like, oh, Big Mom, I was so damn close to perfecting it. Like, we were like one week out but those damn straw hats and that damn Trafalgar Law came in and just ruined my entire laboratory, caused it to explode, and I had a sexy secretary that was a harpy, and she died in the explosion, so I just haven't really been able to get myself together here. I don't think I'll be able to complete it. And so he tries to play up the act, like, oh, it was the straw hats that ruined everything, which honestly, I mean, it, they did. I mean, they, they were, it was directly, maybe not directly because of the straw hats that the lab blew up, but indirectly, right? If the straw hats never arrived, then everything would have just kept going. But um, anyway, the, the point is Caesar didn't actually have the gigantification. He had sort of made a little bit of um, success with that, like with Mocha and the children, but they hadn't got to the point where Big Mom wanted them to be. And Big Mom basically wanted Caesar to develop like a candy or a medicine where you just pop it in and then all of a sudden the kids immediately grow to giant size. Like Big Mom wanted this to be done in like some sort of magic way and Caesar's like lady if it doesn't matter how much money you give me I can't make a magical like formula that just here turns you into a giant overnight right and and the ingredients that he was I mean the uh, the medicine that he was giving to the children was extraordinarily toxic and it was basically a narcotic so yeah very very dangerous stuff here but big mom's like oh don't worry about that Caesar because my first son used his candy powers to create a perfect replica of your lab right here on the island now the lab looks pretty impressive very large and it does seem like a perfect replica of the one we see on punk hazard minus all of the snow and ice uh but beyond that i don't really think we see it much often throughout the arc because caesar was like slaving away in the lab and then that's when beji showed up and he's like hey caesar here you're pretty good with poisons mind coming over to our side you know and of course beji had his heart so it was kind of an easy agreement there caesar was just like well you know i could go to big mom and get killed that way or i could go with you guys and probably end up getting capped off by the mafia at least the mafia is a lot cleaner you know they'll do it in a much more respectable manner you know the way the big mom would do it would probably involve that giant roulette wheel and you get some eyes gouged out that's not gonna be fun so he just went with the mafia plus Beji had the heart so he's like okay so that's that's caesar's lab there uh we have the seducing woods now the seducing woods are the first place that the straw hats encounter when they arrive on the shore of the island because following pudding's map and pudding was kind of screwing them over so she led them directly to the seducing woods where brulee the eighth daughter of the charlotte family ruled they go into the seducing woods and they see sanji and using brulee's mirror mirror power she can make all the animals of the forest look like whatever she wants them to look like you have all the homies in the forest and that's really where we come to the crux of whole cake island because it is the home base of big mom who has the soul soul power literally everything is a homie or has the potential to be a homie that's what the soul soul power kind of does so it's actually kind of an oppressive atmosphere when you really think about it because you are in a place where you literally are never alone no matter where you are on the island there's always something watching you or listening to what you're saying all right so even if you land at the island which kind of made the whole like stealth operation the straw hats were going to kind of attempt there to get sanji in and out that was that just wasn't going to work because it'd be like all right everybody we landed on the beach uh let's hide behind that rock and talk about what's you know how we're going to get into whole cake island and the chateau and rescue sanji they go behind the rock and they start talking about it the the rock can just be like, hello there, what are you talking about? I'm just a rock that sits on the beach. I don't have many people to talk to out here. Glad you showed up. And like, all right, let's, let's not talk to the rock. Let's just... Let's just walk over here behind that tree. And then the tree's like, hey, how you doing? I'm Billy the tree. I'm like, shit. All right. 
How about we just go and just you know, sit on the beach in some random spot on the beach. There's nothing around. You go sit on the beach and okay, here's the plan. All little grains of sand are like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, ah, oh, crap. So there's nothing you really can't get away from it. So that's a pretty cool way of, um, you know, setting up your home base and utilizing the power to its fullest extent. And Big Mom, like I said, has had control over this island for 60 something years. So literally everything, every corner of this island has the potential of being a mole and relaying this information to Big Mom with very, very few um, exceptions to that, like with the fire tank uh, pirate's base that we're going to get to in a second. But yeah, the seducing woods. So the seducing woods are made up of a bunch of trees and flowers and shrubs that are all homies. Why does this matter? Well, because they can move. So literally, the entire forest can shift to Brule or Big Mom's liking. It's just that Big Mom doesn't usually go to the Seducing Woods, so she probably gave an order to Brule, like, you know, Seducing Woods, you will obey Brule and you'll move however she desires, and King Bomb as well. King Bomb's also kind of a big hierarchy in the forest. Brule and King Bomb kind of set up base there, and so when they command the forest to, you know, hey, forest, open up and make a very obvious yellow brick road path so enemies may enter and then close it up immediately so they can't get out or if they try to get out you can just move around so it's like hey that tree over there that was shaped like a fork you know that's how we got in and then the tree can literally just get up and just be like <laughs> you know i'm gonna screw with these people so hard and just move over there and be like damn it what are we doing so you can like run around in the place but you're never going to get out unless you use some kind of ridiculously high octane attack you know or like big mom's using like her spear of elbaf and just boom just pierces right through the entire forest or or, you know, if, if Luffy were to just say, screw this, and probably just go, like, King, King, King Kong gun, and just blast through the trees, um, you would be able to get out that way. But other than that, just running around, you're, you're going to get lost, because the trees know where you're trying to go, and they're going to do everything in their power to, like, change the path and their layout and everything. So that's the seducing woods. Um, also, just an extension of this, which... I don't know if it really warrants another video, but I'll just talk about it anyway, is the mirror world. The mirror world that Brule has complete control over with her ka her mirror mirror powers, or Kagami powers, okay? So, it's pretty much just um, a, a giant hallway filled with mirrors that has like a checkered floor and walls and ceiling. That's all it is. It has a basic shape to kind of mirror the actual world and where all the mirrors are located. Um, her house, which is located in the mirror world, is probably located parallel to Whole Cake Island because that's the base of everything. Whole Cake Island is right smack dab in the center of this archipelago, which all the islands of Totland consist of. So, Brulee being in this main island in her mirror world, she can connect to all mirrors in all of Totland. Um, we don't know that much about the mirror mirror Nomi, if there's a definite range. I, I would assume there is an absolute range. If that was the case, she could easily just walk into mirrors in like Wano and steal Kaido's, you know, Poneglyph or whatever. So there's there's definitely a range. We just don't know what the range is. Uh, it might come down to something as simple as just Brule in order to activate her powers and to connect to a mirror. She has to physically touch the mirror. So Brule just went all over Totland and just like accessed every mirror with her powers as like a waypoint so she could get into them. So in theory, if that's maybe how it does work, if she accessed a mirror, if she touched a mirror in the south blue, she might be able to connect that to her mirror world network in theory. But we just don't know exactly how that works. But that's the mirror world and the seducing woods. Um... Let's see here. Uh, let's talk about the fire tank base now. I believe that's on the western side of the island. This is one of the few places that don't really have a lot of homies hanging out. Because Beiji is a rook, or at least was a rook in the Big Mom, you know, pirates, uh, that's a very high position there. So therefore, he was able to get, like, a special home base for his crew. Um, and yeah, I'm assuming maybe if he wanted homies to help out, they would provide them because he was higher ranked. But he just decided not to, so that's, like, a place that he felt confident that he could stay and talk about his plans to try to assassinate Big Mom at the tea party with the Straw Hats and with Jean Bay and Pedro there and everybody. And he was pretty confident that that information would not leak over to Big Mom. So I'm assuming, yeah, it's it's like Big Mom, out of trust of what Beiji did for her and everything, she decided, all right, Mom! I will give you your own plot of land on my island, Beiji, and the position of Rook in my crew. Beiji's like, thanks, Big Mom, I appreciate it. You know, and then he would set up this
this little base here. This is where Luffy and everybody went to kind of recover after being trapped in the prison for so long. You know, Nami got her shirt burned off, so she had to get, she got a nice evening dress. That was lovely. Um, Luffy got a hat on top of his hat, so you know he's fly. This is the place where Brooke and Luffy drank the milk and like, oh, hey, my tooth grew back. Oh, hey, that crack in my skull healed. So I would love if there was that easy to heal broken bro bones and like fractures, right? So yeah, um, it is uh, not really connected to uh, Beiji's castle fruit because it's outside of it, right? That's Big Father when he uses the castle on the outside. So it's just, it's because Beiji has the castle fruit, whether it be his ship or his home base, it all has to have that castle aesthetic, you know what I mean? So that's kind of on the side of the island there. Um, let's see here. I'm, I'm waiting for the end to do the chateau because the chateau, look at the chateau. I love this map. This map just... Oh, look at that chocolatey feeling again when I look at this map and this diagram in the anime. I don't think we got this in the manga. I think we got this mostly in the anime there. But I'm waiting to do that last because there's a lot of levels to that damn thing, right? But aside from the Seducing Woods and Caesar's Lab, um, the Fire Tank Base, um, we pretty much just have Sweet City, which is the capital city of Totland, and then Whole Cake Chateau, which is Big Mom's castle in the center of Sweet City. So Sweet City, giant metropolis, that that takes most of the island up. This is the place where Big Mom went on her rampage for a Crokem bush. She really wanted that damn Crokem bush. I've still yet to have one, so I don't know what it tastes like. Maybe it tastes like chocolate. I hope. Anyway, so she rampages through that place, and you really kind of you would think Sweet City is like, oh, this is the major metropolis. This is where all the trade and commerce comes through, and all the major decisions are made in the land of Tot. Um, yeah, so we're gonna move up the uh, the the Jelly Bean Initiative to next uh, week. Um, you know, Jelly Bean Island has been, you know, it's been petitioning to become of the archipelago, so we're gonna move on to that. Okay, so the Gumdrop le Legislator, let's, let's talk about that. The Gumdrop le leg can I not say the word legislation? There we go. The Gumdrop Legislation, is it gonna pass or not? This is a major decision in all of Totland, you know, it's just there's so many theories about what they can really do to you. Um, there was that movie, Gumdrop Madness, back in the 30s, but I think, honestly, it should be made- I think, you know, personally, gumdrops should be made legal. 100%. All across the board. Legalize gumdrops. Okay. So, anyway, yeah, you'd think it would be that kind of place, but in actuality, this is, like, the main target every time Big Mom has a hunger pain. Think about it. Big Mom's castle, where she spends, like, most of her time, is right there. Every time Big Mom wakes up with a craving for something and doesn't immediately have that next to her to shovel down her mouth hole, she's going to burst out of her castle and be like, I want some jelly beans! And just rampage through Sweet City. So Sweet City has to have the like all of the carpenters and just construction workers on standby at all time to the point where it's like, Oh, you know, sound the alarm, just, mm, we got a hunger drill. You know, Big Mom's going around ripping apart the bank, and then as soon as, you know, she gets jelly beans, she's like, oh, those are so good. Sorry, everybody. And then she just goes back to her castle immediately without missing a beat. It's like, okay, construction, candy construction crew, move in. We got to fix that bank by lunchtime. You know, so they might be really on this to the point where it happens so damn often. They just know how to fix it at a moment's notice, right? Okay. Okay. So that's Sweet City. We don't know much about the layout of Sweet City itself, except for Whole Cake Chateau, which is the home base of Big Mom. It is consists it consists of um, nine levels above ground, a basement level um, that we know of. I personally feel like a place like this would probably have a lot of sub basements, but we only know about that one basement level. Nine levels above that, and then we have a rooftop sort of veranda sort of deal. And keep in mind once again, this is an actual structure, so it's not made out of cake yet. Um, the way it structures is like this: first, we have the basement level, which consists of the prisoner library. This is the place where. Uh, Charlotte Montdor uses his book powers to trap dissenters in Totland. Anybody that I guess the Big Mom crew captures while at sea or anybody stupid enough to break into the actual island itself they get caught and they get thrown in the prisoner library in the jailhouse book which maybe might have
have Elvis. Maybe that's where Elvis ended up. He ended up in the jailhouse book. In the background, you could also see a bunch of prisoner picture books. Um, considering how Big Mom is when she gets really interested in something and she has sort of like a fleeting interest in things, like she's really interested in something and then she'll like move to something else next the next day, I imagine like prisoners that are recently captured get thrown in the jailhouse book like Luffy and Nami did and so they can kind of be looked at and watched and observed but after a few days and after Big Mom loses interest they get transferred to the long-term prisoner picture book so they just get thrown in that book and those books all get thrown on a shelf and they just pretty much are really dusty they never get open because Big Mom has lost interest in them after a while and there's so many people just they were freed when Jinbei you know used his um his fishman karate and used that to, like get the, the the books wet or he set them on fire and um, a bunch of prisoners and animals like all broke out of the the prison library so we don't really know what happened with all of those if some of them managed to get away or they just perished in the fire um but anyway this is where nami and uh, luffy got thrown in after they got beat to shit basically out of the rampaging army after they defeated cracker um in the anime i mean in the manga it's you could see it too in the anime it's more clear here the writing in the book is in english but it's it's kind of nonsense English, so I'm just going to go ahead and fix that for you. There you go. So I, I cleaned that up right there. If, if Luffy and Nami were going to be thrown in a book, exactly what their stats would be on the other side of the page. Um, then we have the first floor. We don't really get to see the first floor too much, but it's more of like the grand hall, the foyer. Is it a foyer or a foyer? I always said foyer, but I think foyer might be accurate. Anyway, giant hall to welcome guests, because that's usually what it's there for. You know, Big Mom welcomes like the underworld, um, you know, emperors to her island or whoever she else she's inviting for the tea parties that she she has quite often she has to make an impression she has to make the impression of like hey I have all this under my control so she starts it off with a giant hallway the second floor consists of a meeting hall. This is where the Charlottes all got together to discuss after uh, Cracker was defeated by Luffy. Like, all right, what are we going to do about this straw hat situation? There's also some guest rooms located on the second floor. The third floor consists of a courtyard. This is where, I believe, uh, Big Mom met with the Germa for one of their meetings there prior to the wedding. This was also the place where uh, Baron Tamago, eventually Viscount Chick, eventually Count Chicken or the Duke Chicken, clashed with Pedro in this, uh, in this courtyard area area space. Um, this is also where the infirmary is and Pudding's room is located. Um, the infirmary which is apparently made out of graham crackers uh, or maybe it might just be stone to resemble graham, graham crackers after Pudding had her little talk with uh, Reiju and she took out the special gun and you know shot Reiju and then she got put in the infirmary. That's where this was located and this doctor, doctor I don't know if that's chest hair or not or go, is going to look after you and you're, you're in good hands. You're not really sure if that's chest hair or just a shirt or some weird kind of clothing, but he, he knows his way around a syringe. You know what I mean? All right. The fourth floor, we got the treasure vault. This is where Big Mom keeps, as you would figure, all of her treasure that she's accumulated, all of her berries, as well as her prized possession, her poneglyphs. Okay, specifically her road poneglyphs. She's got two regular poneglyphs. One of them was given to her by Jinbei that he found on the ocean floor. Another one, we don't know where it's from. And then we got the road poneglyph, which she had even long before the age of, uh, you know, Roger finding laugh tail this was actually the very first road poneglyph that roger discovered or he found when he snuck into tautland he used his uh mustache charm you know which is very are you just gonna wear that mustache from now on all right whatever anyway he used his mustache charm to manage to get away with the uh the road poneglyph and he managed to escape tautland so that's where that was also you got an alcohol storeroom or like a wine cellar or i guess a wine fourth story room uh a bathroom this is the only room which has actually been confirmed i mean the only story which is confirmed to have an actual bathroom so i'm assuming there's other bathrooms in the chateau um i'm sure big mom has like her own private bathroom and everything like that but I just find it funny in this nine story giant skyscraper of a cake. There's only one bathroom and it's on the fourth floor. Can you imagine that? Like, man, guys, damn it, I have to get to the bathroom. And there's no elevators in this place either. You're running up those damn steps. It's like, oh, okay, okay, second floor. All right, third floor. Oh, I can't hold it. You know, um, so yeah, there, there's a bathroom. If you ever find yourself there, use the bathroom. Um, this was something that was added only in the anime, but in the fifth story, you can see that there is a regular library. This is where she keeps her library, not of prisoners, but of all rare 
kind of beings and creatures and races that she's accumulated all over the years. So she's got like, you know, she captures a long arm and puts them in a book or a long limbed human, a crossbreed between a long arm and a long leg. Um, interesting animals like the manticores that escaped Impale Down. She trapped them in these books. So not very, not really prisoners, just more of like, you know, um, like a, like a museum piece is the way that Big Mom views these things. We don't know where this room actually was located in the manga. It was never specified. In the anime, it was specified on the fifth floor. Considering there were a lot of floors we skipped over in the manga, I think you can make this work. Um, the sixth floor contains Sanji's guest room, and that's all we know about Sanji, uh, about that particular floor, is that's where Sanji was staying. The seventh, uh, we don't know anything, because if you actually look at this graph here, you can see the seventh floor is kind of obscured by a cloud. So we actually have no idea what's on the seventh floor of Whole Cake Chateau. However, um, there were a few rooms that were mentioned but never seen, such as an execution room. We never found out where that was. Um, they actually used the bones from the execution room to make a fake brook, and that's when they swapped out the real book brook for the fake brook in Big Mom's bedroom, remember? That's where they got the bones to make a fake one. There's apparently a, an execution room, like a morgue somewhere, so that might be on the seventh floor. Um, there's also a Big Mom's, like, throne room, like the Queen's Chamber. I was thinking, like, if you were gonna put the Queen's Chamber anywhere, it would either probably be on the first floor, like when you enter, like, welcome, you are now before the queen, or put it closer to her bedchambers. Her bedchambers are located on the ninth floor. So I could see, like, the seventh floor is her throne room, and then a few stories above is her actual bedchambers, okay, because it's really high up. I, I, I could go with that, right? Um, so we don't know much about, we don't know anything concrete about the seventh floor. The eighth floor has the kitchen, which makes sense, because that's, like, right below, or very near below, uh, well, that's right below Big Mom's bedchamber, so it's probably a good idea you put the kitchen right there, and it's also two floors below the rooftop, which is where the tea party is held, and you have to have, bring out the cake and everything like that, so yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a Assuming Big Mom probably wakes up in the middle of the night, you know, craving a Yashoku, you know, Yashoku is just Japanese for midnight snack. Yashoku! You know, and then, you know, Stroizen in the kitchen, he probably- Stroizen, that poor old man, he's like in his 90s, he probably has to sleep in the kitchen. Cause he's like, he's like sleeping next to the, next to the stove at all times, like, Big Mom wakes up at like 2 in the morning, like, I WANT PIZZA! He's like, oh, yep, men! Well, it's like, it's like a, like a fire department, you know, it's like volunteer, he's like, we got pizza! We got midnight snack, we gotta go, 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 what does she want? She wants pizza! Go! You get the dough, you get the pepperoni, come on, come on! We only have 10 minutes! You know, flash fry that damn pizza! Deep fry the pizza! Hurry up! And just shove it in her mouth, and she's like, Mom, pizza! and then she goes back to bed. So that's probably what they have to do on the nightly basis for Big Mom. Probably a good thing you put the kitchen right below her bed chambers. So yeah, then you have the ninth floor, which is Big Mom's bedroom, and then you finally get the rooftop veranda balcony space, which is all for the uh, the tea party. That's where she holds all of her tea parties, I would assume. In the particular instance of this story with Sanji and Pudding, it was a wedding ceremony, which is what the center of the tea party was, but the tea parties can be centered around pretty much anything. Um, so they had the whole, you know, they had the groom and the bride, Oh, there's also like a reception hall for the groom or the bride, also pretty high up in, in the uh, in the chateau there. Um, just like a more of like a like a like a like a ballroom to dance or something like that, where we see gr uh, groom Sanji and bride Pudding hanging out before the wedding, before their epic entrance. And then of course the tea party itself. It went went pretty crazy, you know, with a bunch of Luffy's jumping out of a cake, um, Brooke smashing the beloved picture of Mother Caramel, uh, freaking Beiji taking out an RP. PG, you know, it, we've been to some weird weddings before, I'm sure, right? But, you know, that one kind of takes, what does it take, guys? Come on, what, what does that wedding take? That's right, that wedding takes the cake. Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, that, that's all of Totland, uh, pretty much. If you combine the last two videos I did, plus this video on Whole Cake Island, um, that covered pretty much everything in the Chateau. So, I think we're finally done with this place. If you're a really big fan of Whole Cake Island, the entire arc, you're probably like, ah, damn. If you're not a fan of the island, you're like, yes, Techie, we could stop talking about this place. I love it. I really like the design. I love the Candyland aesthetic. I love the different food-themed islands. I'll be honest with you, I kind of miss it a little bit. I mean, I love Wano, and I love what they're doing right now, but um, 
Thailand had such like an Alice in Wonderland wackiness to it. I, I kind of enjoyed it. I would have kind of liked to spend a little bit more time jumping around those different islands, getting to see the different ministers and all the weird homies that existed, you know? Um, maybe I'm weird like that. You know me. I really love me some some world building, but who knows? Maybe we could do uh, like a spin-off series of Totland at some point. Probably not. All right, anyway, go get yourself some chocolate brownie cake with chocolate chips and chocolate drizzle, which is embedded in the cake itself. Have a good night, everybody. Teching, signing out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you want some cake, Barry? I'm such an asshole. I'm not giving you cake. Here you go, buddy. Here you go.